Today we're going to be taking a look at this MSI GF76 gaming laptop. This is a 17-inch laptop. We're going to be checking out what the current specs are. We're going to see what our upgrade options are, and we're going to see how easy it is to do those upgrades. So let's check it out. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're checking out this MSI GF76 gaming laptop. So this is just going to be a little mini review. We're going to take a look at everything it's got and what it's capable of. And then we're going to take a look at what the upgrade options are and how easy those are. So let's go ahead and take a look at the, the body itself first. And it's a pretty nice thin laptop considering it's a gaming laptop. It's amazing how thin they can make these things anymore. But on this left side here we've got the power input. We've got two USB A's. On the far side here we've got another USB A. We've got a headphone jack, we've got a USB-C, an HDMI port, and then we've also got a Ethernet jack. And on the back there's nothing, just uh, some vents here to let the heat out. On the bottom side we've got plenty of uh, venting here and you can see the heat pipes in here. Looks like hopefully it's pretty efficient at getting that heat out of there. And this is the GF76, if we look at this little sub model number here, it's the 11UD. Now they made, I think, like four main options on these, and this would be what we would call the second lowest, I guess. So not the lowest, not the highest, but this is the second lowest of those four. So we'll talk about some of the differences that you might see, and it's basically, generally speaking, the, the graphics card is going to be the main difference. But there is another difference underneath the hood as far as the hard drive configuration. But overall, pretty good looking little machine. As we open it up here, we get a good looking 17 inch screen, and it is 144 hertz. It's got really thin bezels on it, so that's why this thing isn't the size of a tank. It's got a decent sized keyboard, a decent trackpad, and it looks like some you know, red lighting underneath the keyboard that tells you it's a gaming laptop. Let's go ahead and check out the specs that this one's starting with. So if you look in the task manager here, the CPU is the 11th gen Intel Core i7-11800H. So that's a pretty decent laptop processor. It's not top of the line, but it's definitely plenty strong. Eight cores, I think 16 threads. This has 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 megahertz memory. So that's a good start right there. Looks like a 500 gigabyte, uh, probably Western Digital SSD drive. We've got the built-in graphics here, and then of course we've got the gaming graphics card, the GPU, which is an RTX 3050 Ti laptop GPU. So not top of the line again, but definitely capable of playing plenty of games. Now, remember I said there was four models of these. The lowest model has just a regular 3050, not the 3050 Ti. The next one up I think is probably a 3060, and then there's probably a 3070 also. So this is a good middle ground that's not going to break the bank. If you're looking at one of these used right now, then you can probably get a pretty good deal on it. Now of all the things that we talked about here, the two that we're going to look at inside once we take the, the bottom cover off is going to be the memory and the disk to see what our options are of upgrades on those. So let's go ahead and shut this thing down, flip it over, and start taking some screws out of it. Alright, now if you're going to be doing any of these upgrades, then the first thing I suggest is you get a decent screwdriver set, and I've been using this trusty Strabido kit here. I've used it for every upgrade for the last two years, and I've never come across a place where I found a screw or a type of connection that I didn't have the right tool for in this thing. Now one of the reasons I suggest that is you always want to make sure you have the right size tip for whatever type of screw that you're taking out because you don't want to strip these things out. That would be a pain in the butt. And the other thing is, this comes with a little magnetic keeper here. Now I suspect that not all of these screws are the same size, at least the same length. So by placing them out on here in kind of a configuration that you take them off, that's going to help put this thing back together without any guesswork of which screw goes into which hole. So let me go ahead and take a second with my trusty screwdriver here, take all these screws out, and I'll be right back. Alright, so I took all the screws out, put them on my little magnetic holder here, and there was one that was a little bit smaller or quite a bit smaller than the rest of them, so got them over here nice and safe. The next thing I need to do is we're going to pry this bottom plate off, and you want to use something like this, a little pry tool. There's a couple different options in this kit. Uh, you don't want to just jab a Phillips head screwdriver in there, because that's going to possibly scratch up your plastic. So I'm just going to take this little flat end here, and there's looks like there's a seam right across the front here. So I'm just going to pop it in and see if I can get it started. And there we go. 
once you get that started, you want to just gently kind of go to the right and to the left and just kind of pop these plastic clips. And you're just going to work your way all the way around. And I'm just kind of putting it in there a little bit and twisting it just to get a little bit of pry action going. And once you get the whole front opened up, then you can kind of just start to lift it back gently and see if you can get the whole bottom plate removed. And here it goes. So we'll set that back here. And let's go ahead and take a look at what we got under the hood. Now I'm just going to give you a look, quick little tour here. If I was going to be doing any work, I'd take this connector right here off, which is connected to the battery. So you want to take the battery off of here just so that nothing accidentally gets powered up while you're poking around in here. You don't want to short anything out. But the first thing that should be obvious is right here, this is the SSD drive. That's a 2280 NVMe drive, and this is capable of Gen 3. You don't have to worry about getting a Gen 4. You can absolutely buy a Gen 4 if you wanted to upgrade, but it's not going to give you any performance difference. But just in case you want to take that drive into a different computer down the line, then you have a little bit of forward compatibility. But we got just one little screw here, a little Phillips head screw here that you would take off, and this would lift up a little bit, and then you wiggle it right out, pop a new one in. This happens to be a 500 gig. I think we're going to keep that in here for now, but to upgrade to one terabyte or two terabyte right now, it's not too expensive. I'll leave some links down below for some compatible ones that I would recommend if you wanted to go ahead and upgrade. Now, if you do take this drive out and upgrade to your other one, you're either going to have to get this Windows copy onto your new drive, or you can just reinstall Windows Fresh. And I've got a video on how to install Windows I'll go ahead and link it in the description below. That's if you just want to start fresh, which is what I usually do. I usually save all the data off the drive, either put it in the cloud or put it on a thumb drive, and then just wipe the whole drive out and start the windows brand new. That way you don't have anything kind of stuck in there from the last time that you were running windows or any kind of junk that may have gotten installed along the way. So over here is our wireless card. So that's just going to be another M.2 connector for the, the Wi-Fi. And this particular model has Wi-Fi 6. So no need to upgrade that. And then underneath this little plastic flap here is going to be your RAM modules. Let me turn it around so you can actually see. So right here underneath these little black flaps here is going to be your two sticks of RAM. These are both 8 gigabyte DDR4 3200 megahertz. For this right here, we've got 16 gigs total. It's capable of going all the way up to 64. Now I would say on this particular model with the specs that it has, 32 gigs would be a good upgrade. 64 might be an overkill. But right now you can get 32 gigs for less than 100 bucks at the time of recording. So if you wanted to just add a little bit extra memory, then it's a pretty easy thing to do. Like I said, you just lift this up. There is an ear on either side here, what I call an ear. It's just a clip right here and then a clip right here. All you do is you just spread those clips out and this thing is going to pop up. You just pull the chip out pop the new one in and lock it down. Now you want to go ahead and remove both of these, the top one and then the one that's underneath that one, and then go ahead and put the bottom one in first and then the top one. There is an offset notch to these things. You just have to line up the way that the old one was in there with your new one. And like I said, it's about a one minute job to get both of these RAM chips out and pop the new ones in. So I'll leave a link down below also for some compatible RAM in both those options of 32 gigs and 64 gigs. Now, if you have one of these that has the higher option than the UD model that this one is, then I said the biggest difference is gonna be your GPU is gonna be more powerful, but there is also supposed to be a second M.2 slot for an NVMe drive. So if that's the case, whatever it came with, whether it's 500 gig or one terabyte, just go ahead and keep your windows on there. And if there's an empty spot somewhere, I'm not sure it would be. There may be a sled over here or something because there's lots of room over here and it looks like they could easily put another NVMe connector over there. Just take a new drive, just pop it in there, and then in Windows you can go ahead and format that up and it's ready to go. You don't have to worry about copying any files over. So really, this is a pretty easy and clean system to work on. Take the screws out the bottom, pop off the lid. You got easy access to both the hard drive and the RAM. Sometimes they put these things underneath the hard, underneath the motherboard and you have to take the entire motherboard out and it's just an absolute stupid pain. This one is really easy to work on. So I think that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you found what you were looking for by watching it. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer anything I can. 
check out those links for any of the things that we talked about. I'm an Amazon affiliate, so anything that you do purchase from those links helps out the channel, and I thank you for that. Let me know down in the comments below if you've got one of these, how much you like it. Tell me what kind of upgrades you've made to yours. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I appreciate you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.